Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the workshop, and welcome to session three of carving a Drake wood duck. And today's uh, session three will focus on taking the work that we did, roughing out the head and putting in the details and hopefully getting the eyes mounted as well. And uh, thank you for the feedback on this new series. I appreciate it. That's encouraging to me. If you're getting value out of the series and my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost anything, but it does help me out. And uh, that way you'll get notification of any new content that I put up as I continue to build this channel. So let's get busy on detailing the wood duck drake head. Before we start carving, I did want to make note of one change that I made uh, since the last video was made. The crest I had dropped down kind of down here. And when I checked my pattern, I just felt like I needed to lift that up. So I carved that up a little bit and I like it better. And I mentioned that here because uh, you've heard me say that before. Even if you've been doing it for 35 years or whatever, you need to continually check your reference uh, because it's easy to make mistakes. And I think that change is just gonna make this project better. So we'll start carving the bill. Before we do that, I wanted to sh show you some of the bill details here. This is an older study bill, so it's not the greatest study bill in the history of decoy carving, but it, it serves the purpose. And uh, I wanted to note this little raised area up here. Hopefully you can see that in the light. There's a little bit of a shadow cast there. That's the yellow portion of the bill, this fleshy part of the bill. So we're going to want to go in and, and carve that out so that there's a little bit of relief between here and here. Uh, there's not much structure going on on the side of the bill. The nail is pretty large. So we'll carve that in. The nostril openings are very small. So I just thought if you didn't have a reference bill, I would just show that uh, to help you out. Now I used my calipers or dividers and uh, the study bill and marked out this distance. And uh, this structure kind of disappears into the cheek down here. It doesn't go all the way down. Kind of does the same thing coming up to the top and the front of the notch. So I've got those marked out and then I, the uh, nail that we talked about. The nail is large and it kind of wraps around the end of the bill. Um, and then we have these little side structures marked out. Now I'm going to use that little pyramid shaped ruby bit and go in and take wood out, leave the uh, the yellow area or what will be yellow high and take wood out next to it to create that little ridge that we're looking for in the upper part of the bill. And I'm gonna speed this video up. And then I'm just using that to blend back into the bill so that we have a ridge there, but uh, the rest of the bill is smoothed and blended. And now I'm rounding that little ridge area so that it's a nice soft blend there, not a hard, hard line. Now I'm going to change to this little cylindrical bit and use that to outline the nail to begin with. And then I'll use it to blend and round the nail and also take off wood so that the nail is a little raised away from the rest of the bill. And I'm also going to use that same bit to begin to define those bill ridges 
on the edges that lead up to the, the nail on both sides. And then you're just rounding those after you cut the grooves, rounding back into the bill and rounding in the other direction. So this takes some time to just work back and forth and get those shapes. Now I'm gonna change to a little flame shape ruby bit with a point on it and that allows you to get in a little tighter and blend things out a little more and work the nail and also those ridges on the end of the bill. Once that's smoothed out pretty well, then I'll just go back to some sanding and uh, use some 320 grit sandpaper just to smooth things out overall after the grinding has been done. And then I've got this little um, bit holder and people have asked me about this. I think you can get one from James Company. You can find them on Amazon but they're kind of a burr holder that you can put one of your grinding bits in there and use it like a pencil. It's really good to get into tight areas. And you can see I've got a ball shape on one end and a flame shape on the other. It makes it real convenient to use both of those shapes just by flipping end for end. So that flame I can use to sand that groove, the bill grooves out there. There's no substitute for sanding, and I'm just uh, using a little, this is probably 120 grit to take out the heavy tool marks and scratches, and just, this is a little padded Swiss sandpaper, which is kind of nice to, to get in and round things. Next, there's a little groove along the upper mandible, and I use my finger like this to kind of guide and put a nice line, consistent line from the edge. And then I'm gonna use my knife and just carefully score that. You've seen this in other videos, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. That doesn't have to be a, a very deep score, but it helps guide your grinding bit when we go to open it up a little bit more next. I'm gonna use a little cylindrical ruby bit and use that to go in that knife guideline and open that ridge up a little bit more. This is, you just have to be very careful that your bit doesn't wander out of the groove and you create a problem. This doesn't have to be very deep, but it's very characteristic of the bird. I'll do that on both sides and then I'll use some sandpaper to smooth those. I just fold up a 320 grit piece of sandpaper forms a nice sharp edge and I can use that to go down in that groove and round from both directions and smooth things up there. Now I'm going to work on nostril openings and so back to the pattern with the dividers to get them located And I'm going to speed through this because you've seen this on other videos. If you've watched my um, Mallard videos, especially the Drake Mallard head, I go through this in great detail. But I think we can speed through this. I'm just getting the nostril locations set and then we'll grind the uh, enclosure for the nostril and then put the nostril hole in place. So once I get those penciled in, I like to look at symmetry and make sure 
they're level from the front and the same distance from the center line. Now I'll use this little cylindrical bit again and kind of go in and carve around the nostril enclosure. And I'll speed this video up so that we can watch it uh, quickly. Just going back and forth, working to define those the nostril enclosure. Now I'm going to switch to a little ruby flame bit, and that allows you to get in and around those grooves that we created with the other bit and leave the nostril enclosure a little raised from the bill and also use it to round that nostril enclosure. With the pointed tip of that ruby flame bit, you can kind of dig in and further define the uh, nostril enclosures. Make sure they're deep enough to project. Now I've just penciled around that area just to get a look at symmetry again, make sure things are lining up the way they should and they look right before we put the uh, do the final sanding here and put the nostril holes themselves in those enclosures. Again, I'm using that little folded piece of sandpaper. There may be better tools out there. If there are, share them. Uh, but this is a good way to get some detailed sanding done. Now, with the dividers, I'm going back to the pattern one more time and just locating that that nostril hole. And I like to do that just to make sure that I've got things in the proper position. And this helps maintain symmetry side to side. So I've marked the upper position of that. Then I'm going to pencil in the nostril so I can get a look at it. And then I'll use the little ruby ball to go in and open up those nostrils. These are pretty small nostril openings, so you need a, a good firm grip and a good stable grip on things to really be able to control that small ruby ball. It's easy to, for it to grab and run out, so you just need to have a good foundation. You can see here I'm going to re-grip again because I just didn't have confidence that I had it. So it doesn't take much here, but we need to get those nostrils put in place. You've seen this before. After I uh, carve those in place, I like to pencil them in. It just gives you more of a visual, and it uh, makes it easier to check symmetry. Again, from the front, you can see the nostrils a little better with the, the dark pencil in place. Things are looking good. Now we're going to use the embossing tool. You can see there's a little bit of a wrinkle indication on that fleshy yellow area. Let's see if we can get a better view here. So we're going to do some wrinkles with the embossing tool. Kind of sketched in where that little shelf area is. So we're going to come in here and press into the wood and just give this fleshy area, a little bit of structure. Kind of fade that out as it goes down. There's a better view and I'll work on those to soften them like we've done before. You can use the embossing ball and just kind of run over 
the area again and knock down any sharp edges. I'm also putting a few in at the end of the nostril here, just kind of splaying out for, in a forward position. Not real deep, but just an indication of a little bit of wrinkling there. This takes some time and practice to get a nice soft job on the embossing, but it really does uh, make the bill look more realistic. And you can choose to not use that. I mean, for a gunning decoy, you don't need that kind of detail. But Before we do the eyes, I wanted to put just a little bit of detail on the underside of the bill. And I'm just looking at my study bill. Got my guidelines drawn on here. Not going to do a ton of detail, but just a little detail under there to finish the bill. I'm just going to use this little 1 8 inch cylindrical ruby bit and put in these details and I'll just kind of speed through this. This particular ruby bit has grit on the end of it so you can use it like an end mill, just taking wood out in tight spots in a vertical position with the the grinder like that. That's helpful. Here's just a quick shot of uh, the work that I did there and I'll use a little bit of sandpaper to smooth things up and the bill's ready to go. Let's talk about wood duck eyes for a second. I've always used Tohican in the past and Tohican's no longer selling eyes. Um, they may have other eyes available at different reps, I'm, I'm not sure, but you can no longer buy from Tohican. Uh, these are 123 eyes. Um, they don't have the, the band around the outside. These are 124s. This is what I've always used in the past normally, but what I've been shifting to is Michael Braun eyes, MRB, and uh, Michael doesn't give me any kickback for this. I'm not a sales rep. I just wanted to show you the accuracy of the, look at the pupils on those eyes and the little light coloration around the pupils, the blended iris. I just think they're beautiful. You're getting a little reflection from the light in there, but trust me, these are great looking eyes. So I'm gonna use that for our wood duck. Okay, I'm using my dividers and going from this top of the bill to the front opening of the eye. There's a little ring around the eye on a wood duck. I'm looking for the eye opening right now because that's what I want in the wood is cutting the opening for the eye. So we'll do that on both sides. And then I'll get my circle template. And I know for a 10 millimeter eye, that's why I have a little arrow on my template. A little cheater. Uh, 7 16 is about the right size for the opening. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then just a tip here. I always drill a through eye hole to give me a starting place, but you can see that hole is not in the middle of where I want my eye, the way things ended up. Once you start moving wood around, things change a little bit. This one on this side is pretty close to the center. Why? Not real sure, but I don't trust the eye holes that I drilled. Again, I just use them as kind of a guideline as I'm shaping the head. It helps. And then once I get them penciled on, look at it from the front, make sure the eyes at least as near as you can tell are level. A lot of times it's easy to get an eye lower or higher than the other one. And we want those when you look head on to look right at you and be level. So those look pretty good, although I may 
sneak this one up a bit now that I'm looking at it a little bit more. And now we'll use the gouge like I normally do to open up the eye holes. I just use a little curved shape hand gouge and just go at this slowly. Some people use eye drills and those are great too. This is just the way I learned to do it, so I've stuck with it. So I'll do that on both sides. I'm using epoxy sculpt to set these eyes, uh, like I've done in other videos. So I won't spend too much time on how to do this, other than uh, needing this epoxy and getting it ready so it's consistent color throughout uh, as you mix the two parts together. I'm using this because there's a little bit of an eye ring around the eye set and I want that to be in this epoxy sculpt. It's strong and uh, as it dries you can kind of sculpt it into position and, and create some wrinkles in the ring and and things that are a little easier than the plastic wood which is another alternative approach so i'll be back you've seen enough kneading of the epoxy i've just got water and a an old paintbrush here and i'm gonna just dampen the eye hole and the surrounding area that'll promote smoothing and bonding of the epoxy sculpt I'm going to get enough to push into the eye hole and fill it completely. Maybe just a little bit more because on this decoy I want a little bit squeezing out around the eye as we push it in place. These uh, Michael Braun eyes, by the way, have oblong irises or pupils, I'm sorry, just like a real wood duck. So you need to make sure you have the orientation right. They should go a long ways this way, not long ways up and down. So I've got that in position this way, lined up and I'm gonna push that in. going to kind of form the epoxy sculpt around the eye. This is kind of an iterative process. You want it deep enough that from the front you can still see a little bit of eye, but not, not much. Let's start moving this around and spreading it out. I need a little bit more underneath the eye. I'm just taking another piece of the epoxy and then wet your finger and start spreading. And you can really push on this stuff to get it to blend into the Tupelo pretty well. Now I need to open up the eye again, and I use just a little retired scrubber paintbrush. It's good stiff bristle that I can use to push this epoxy around and open up the eye and create more of a channel. I don't want to block the eye channel. Same back here, I'm gonna... I don't want it to look bug-eyed, which is a, an easy mistake to make, especially when you're beginning. A lot of people just put a big bulging ring around the eye, and uh, it doesn't look very natural. So pay attention to that. I'm gonna take a few series of shots here as I'm working this 
because uh, it does take some time. And then I'll come back and show you progress. Okay, I just kind of gave the eye a final push in, and that brings out a little bit more of this material. And I'm going to start sculpting the, the eye ring. I've got water on this scrub brush. And basically, I'm just pushing material down towards the eye and creating a little groove. Pretty intuitive what you have to do to create the eye ring, but it's not necessarily easy. I keep a paper towel handy so that I can wipe off excess material. So I'm just starting to form that eye ring. One nice thing about this epoxy sculpt, it doesn't set right away, so it gives you plenty of working time. And you can see you need working time to go back and forth and get this thing looking more natural than it is right now. So I'll come back with another shot in a minute here. Now I'm starting to use a little bit of a softer brush so that I can brush over this area with water and begin to smooth the eye ring. So take off the sharp edges and continue blending into the surrounding area and also with the point of the brush I can work the eye opening and really begin to sculpt that in that kind of almond shape that we're looking for. Getting closer, just make sure the eye ring is not too big. Uh, it's pretty narrow around the eye, and I'm going to continue to work on that. I'll install the other eye in the same way. You don't need to watch that same process again. And when this sets up a little bit more, I'm going to use some dental tools and put a few wrinkles in, uh, in that eye ring. All right, I've inserted both eyes created the eye ring and now I'm just using a little dental tool uh, to press some wrinkles and structure in this eye ring. You may not have a dental tool. I got this one used. They throw them away when they can't use them anymore. So you may check at your dentist office to see if they have are able to give those away. So I'll continue to work that a little bit, but you can kind of see the effect there. And uh, the other thing we'll do is this, when this dries in sanding, you can do a little bit of sculpting of this epoxy sculpt at that time as well. And then again, as that sets up, you can use some sort of embossing tool and continue to shape that eye ring. So it's the size and shape you want. All right, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to let that dry. All right, that's the end of session three, and we've got the head detailed. I may go back and put it in some carving in the crest but I'm gonna hold on that until I get the decoy together and get a feel for how the head looks with the body. Until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you.